Do you want to quickly create tasks in Microsoft Planner from a SharePoint list or an Excel table? In this Microsoft Power Automate tutorial, I'll show you how to build a flow that will create a task and planner for each of your SharePoint list items. I will also show you how to create a flow that will trigger each time a new SharePoint list item is created. Later in the video, I'll show you how to build a flow so you can quickly create planner tasks from an Excel table and how you can add a description to your tasks. In a different video, I'll cover how to use the update task details action to add attachments and checklist items to your planner task. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that video. In Power Automate, create an instant cloud flow. Select the manual trigger. I'll be using the classic designer for this tutorial as the new designer still has a few bugs. Add a get items action. It's always best practice to use a filter query when using the get items action. This is especially important if you have a large list of items. I only want to return items that haven't been marked complete. To do this, I'll enter the internal column name of my column. It's important to note that the internal column name may not always match the name you see in SharePoint. If you aren't sure how to get the internal column name, click on the link in the description box below to find out how. I'll enter NE for not equal to and complete in between single quotes. Depending on how many items you have in your SharePoint list, I would also recommend specifying a top count. This will increase the speed of your flow runs. Instead of returning all items in your list, it will limit the get items action to the number entered here. If you are new to Power Automate, I would recommend adding a compose action after your get items action to store the number of items returned. This is especially helpful when using a filter query as you can quickly check to see if the number of items returned is what you are expecting. Use the length function. Click on the dynamic content tab and insert the value dynamic content from the get items action. Save your flow and run a test. Since I've set a top count to 3, I'm expecting the output of this compose action to be 3. If the compose action is returning 0, you may need to adjust your filter query. Add and apply to each action. Insert the value dynamic content from the get items action. This action will loop through each item returned from the get items action. The assigned to column in my SharePoint list is a multiple choice person column. In order to assign users to a task in Planner, I need a string of users' email addresses separated by a semicolon. Add a select action. We'll use this action to pull the email addresses only from the multi person column. In the from field, insert the multi person column dynamic content. In my case, it's assigned to. Click on this icon to switch from map to text mode. In the map field, Insert the email dynamic content from the multi-person column. When you do this, Power Automate will automatically nest the select action inside and apply to each action. This apply to each action isn't necessary. Drag the select action outside of the apply to each action and delete the apply to each action that Power Automate has automatically added to your flow. Run a test. The select action outputs an array of email addresses. To convert the array of email addresses into a string, add a join action. In the from field, insert the output from the select action above. In the join with field, enter a semicolon. Run a test. The join action has now converted the array of email addresses into a string of email addresses separated by a semicolon. In my flow, I want to dynamically select which bucket to place my task into based on the status of the task. The create a task action requires a bucket ID. Add a list buckets action. This action will return a list of all buckets from the selected plan. Add a filter array action. 
We'll use this action to filter the buckets by name. In the From field, insert the value dynamic content from the list bucket actions above. Since the bucket names in my plan match the status choice options in my SharePoint list, I'll insert the value name dynamic content into the first value field. Leave the operator as is, and in the second value field, I'll insert the status value dynamic content from the get items action. It's important to note that the values used in the filter rate action are case sensitive. Adjust this action to suit your needs. Whenever I use a filter rate action, I always like to store the number of items returned in a compose action. This step is optional. Insert an expression. Use the length function. Click on the dynamic content tab and insert the body dynamic content from the filter array action above. Let's run a test. The filter array action has returned a single item. Since I'm using a choice column to determine which bucket the planner task is created in, I need a way to add a bucket if the filter array action doesn't return any items. Initialize a string variable in the root of the flow to hold the bucket ID. A variable acts as a container. In this case, it'll hold a string value. Add a condition action. In the first value field, insert the output from the compose action above. Change the operator to is not equal to. In the second value field, insert a zero. If the filter array action is not equal to zero, meaning an item is returned, we'll need to set the variable to the bucket ID returned from the filter array action. Add a set variable action into the yes branch. Insert the ID dynamic content from the filter array action. The set variable action has been automatically nested inside and applied to each action. This is because the filter array action returns an array of items, even if it's a single item. We'll need an expression to avoid the apply to each action. For more tips and tricks on the apply to each action, check out this video. Hover over the ID dynamic content in the set variable action. Take note of the text between the single quotes. This is the dynamic content key. We'll need this shortly. The dynamic content key is ID in lower case. Delete the dynamic content and pull the set variable action outside of the apply to each action. Delete this apply to each action. Insert an expression. Enter a question mark in square brackets. Items in an array can be accessed using a key. An array is a collection of items. The first item in an array is zero. Second is one, third is two, and so on. Enter a zero between the square brackets. Add another set of square brackets and single quotes. Enter the dynamic content key. Dynamic content keys are case sensitive. To return the bucket ID from the filter array action, enter ID in lower case. Go to the start of the expression by pressing the up arrow key. Click on the dynamic content tab and insert the body dynamic content from the filter array action. Press OK. This expression will return the first bucket ID from the filter array action. If the filter array action is equal to zero, meaning no items have been returned from the filter array action, we need to create a bucket. Add a create a bucket action into the no branch. Insert the status value dynamic content from the get items action into the name field. Select the group ID and plan ID. Add a set variable action. In the value field, insert the ID dynamic content from the create a bucket action. In SharePoint, I'm going to create a new choice option for the status column. I'll change the status of this item and run a test. Let's review the output of this test. In this first apply to each loop, no items were returned from the filter array action. You can see the flow has created a bucket. In the second loop, an item was returned from the filter array action and a bucket wasn't created. Insert a create a task action outside of the condition. Since we've used a variable to store the bucket ID, we only require a single create a task action. 
select your group ID and plan ID. In the title field, insert the title dynamic content from the get items action. For the bucket ID, select enter custom value. Insert the variable. For the due date time, insert the due date dynamic content from the get items action. In the assigned users ID field, insert the output from the join action. Run a test. Once you've confirmed the flow is working as expected, remove the top count from the get items action. If you have a large SharePoint list, you'll want to toggle on pagination and set a threshold. Now that you have a flow that bulk creates tasks from a SharePoint list, you may want a flow that automatically creates a new task each time an item is created in SharePoint. I've created a copy of my original flow. Replace the manual trigger with the when a new item is created trigger. Since this trigger will only return a single item, I'll need to pull these actions outside of the apply to each action. However, Power Automate will not let me do that because the dynamic content I've used inside these actions depend on the apply to each action. Here's a little trick I like to use. Add a scope action. The scope action is optional. I prefer to use it so I only need to copy a single action to my clipboard rather than needing to copy each action individually. Drag all these actions inside the scope action. Copy the scope action to your clipboard. Delete the apply to each action. Now you can add the scope action back to your flow. Delete these two actions. Any dynamic content in these actions that reference the apply to each action from the previous flow will need to be replaced with the appropriate dynamic content from the flow trigger. If you hover over the dynamic content label, you can see the reference to the apply to each action. If you try to save your flow as is without making any changes, you'll get an error. In the from field of the select action, delete this dynamic content and insert the appropriate dynamic content from the flow trigger. In my case, it's the assigned to dynamic content. This is the dynamic content from the multi-person column. In the map field, delete this dynamic content and insert the email dynamic content from the multi-person column. In the filter array action, replace the status value dynamic content with the status value dynamic content from the flow trigger. We'll need to do the same for the create a bucket action. Replace any of the dynamic content in the create a task action with the dynamic content from the flow trigger. Run a test. In SharePoint, I'll create an item. Let's check Power Automate. The flow ran successfully, and the task has been created. If you are using an Excel table instead of a SharePoint list, the flow logic is the same. Start with a manual trigger. Instead of the get items action, use a list rows present in a table action. Your Excel data must be in a table to use this action. Select your location. Document library. File. And table. 
To reduce the number of rows returned, insert a filter query. The list rows present in a table action only accepts a single filter query argument. You'll want to make sure whatever column header you are filtering by doesn't include any spaces. If you need to add more conditions, you'll need to use a filter array action. To learn how to use the filter array action, check out this video. For simplicity's sake, I'll filter my Excel rows where the status column is not equal to complete. To assign a user to a task when creating it, ensure you have a column with the email address of the user you'd like to assign the task to. To assign multiple users, make sure you include all email addresses in the column separating each with a semicolon. Limit the number of rows returned by entering a top count. This is optional. However, while building and testing a flow, I like to limit the top count to speed up the flow run. Also, whenever you are working with dates and times in Excel, it's important to set the date time format to ISO 8601. I'll add a compose action to store the number of items returned from the list rows present in a table action. This step is optional. Save your flow and run a test. Add and apply to each action. Insert the value dynamic content from the list rows present in a table action. Add a create a task action. Select the group ID and plan ID. Insert the dynamic content from the list rows present in a table action into the appropriate fields. Run a test. Once you've confirmed your flow is working as expected, remove the top count from the list rows present in a table action. To add a task description, you'll need to add an update task details action to your flow. Add this right after the create a task action. In the task ID field, select enter custom value and insert the ID dynamic content from the create a task action above. In the description field, insert the dynamic content that contains your task description. In my case, it's task description. Run a test. What other planner automations are you looking to create? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video helpful and plan to quickly create planner tasks with a Power Automate flow, please consider giving this video a like. If you'd like to learn how to use a filter array action in your Power Automate flows, watch this video. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any other Power Automate tutorials. Thanks for watching.